So if you assume that this is here is going to be simply supported beam, it says in the column, the reality is this beam is going to start to reflect this way, and this column is going to start to win this one. Therefore, here you are applying the hex and load from the column and a little bit of a mod because you are picking the column with it. This can be mainly the main source of moment on this uh, on this column. You know? So mainly we're going to be working here with gravity columns. Gravity columns means it's going to be those columns supporting gravity loads. What are the gravity loads? Gravity loads is going to be this column supporting, right? The gravity loads, again, gravity loads is going to be like dead load, live load. It's going to be self-weight of items. So mainly it's going to be dead load and live load. When it comes to seismic or lateral forces, it's going to be a completely different design which I'm not going to be covering. But you still have certain recommendations in the code, in our CPC code, about gravity columns and seismic zone, let's say, and high seismic zone. Let me just make it that simple. I don't want to say seismic category and go on another thing that I don't want to really cover. So they say, well, it is true that this column is not supporting natural forces, but this column is drifting with the belt. It is not meant or it's not built or designed to support seismic forces. But you know what? When the building moves, this column is going to be riding with it. It's going to be moving. So actually, this building is going to be exposed to additional moment. And because this moment, it's not really an easy process to figure out this moment in this graphic columns, we're just going to be adding a few requirements here for you. You just do them, and that's it. There is no force determination when it comes to size on graphic columns. So in a building, let's say that you have 50 columns, right? So you say 20 columns can be resisting the lateral force, the seismic force. We're going to assign them for the seismic moment frames. The other 40 columns is going to be supporting only gravity, right? So you know that certain columns can be designed to be a seismic moment frame. Now, the other 40 columns, it's true that they are mainly designed to support gravity loads, but they're going to move naturally when the building moves. So there's certain additional requirement that we want you to do it. Like what? They're going to say, you need to add more ties to the column, and that's enough. Okay. And this happened only in California. So the typical column that you're going to see here, you're going to have a tight column. What's the tight column? Here's the column division. And here's a section through the column. It's going to be rectangular in shape or a square in shape. It could be either this or that. It can be one of the two. It's going to have reinforcing bars. When you look here at this cross section, you're going to have at least one bar at each corner of the column. It's going to be a minimum. You cannot have a rectangle column like this and only three vertical bars. You need to have one bar at each corner. And you may have other bars here in the middle. If you want to, you can add three bars here. And also, you can bundle three bars. You can put two three bars next to each other, one bundle bars, right? You can add your double bars. Why do we call them tight column? Because when you look here at the Ties provided, you're going to see that there are certain spacing. So the spacing here will be S, spacing of the ties. While in this spiral column, you're going to see the ties give you one piece of rebar. You see this? Goes in the back. So it's going to be one piece. And if you see here, say scale wise, the spacing here for the spiral is going to be much smaller than that for the tight column. So let's say for a tight column, it could be four inches, six inches, and the spiral is going to be two to three inches. In a spiral column, usually I'm expecting to see here number three rebars. You would never go to number four unless you have big bridge column, but in here you can go to number four and number five. Because also you have enough space. So which one is stronger? Spiral is going to be stronger. What's the reason then? P factor is high, right? Because here you are referring to the chart. So what is the reason that this P factor is high? Why the person who has written the code has paid higher P factor for a spiral column? The S is smaller. Because the spacing is smaller. Yeah, this, this is correct. So when you look here at this column, you say, would you call this tight column because just the type of ties that you apply or because of the section, because this is rectangular or square? In other words, if I bring the ties and put them in a circular column, would you call this spiral or tight column? 
And if you bring this spiral here and you put it within this rectangular column, what would you call it? Spiral or rectangle? Or pie? Let's give you the appropriate thing, right? So the bottom line here is you need to look at the ties. Whatever confinement reinforcement, we call this confinement reinforcement. Why do we call it confinement? Because actually what you do here, you put the vertical rebars and then you start to put the ties around it. So these ties are confining, whether it's going to be a pie or a spiral. This reinforcement that you put here, we call it confinement reinforcement. So if this confinement reinforcement is one piece, like a spiral like this, whether the section is round section, but it's going to be a square section, or rectangular section, but again, called the spiral column. Because in bridges, in many cases, you have a rectangular column, and then it has two spirals, like overlap. So in, in many cases, we have a column like this, and then we have two spirals within the column itself, and then you put the vertical force like this. So in a case like this, we're not going to call it high column, we're going to call it spiral column. But it looks like a rectangular column. So the bottom line is going to be the confinement reinforcement that we provide around the columns. So now we understand this section rectangular and pied, and this one includes spiral and round. We have some other columns. We call this composite columns. So what is this made of? This is like a steel pipe. You see this here, steel pipe? And we bring this steel pipe, and then we fill it with concrete. You may put some reinforcing inside if you wanted to. But now the actual strength of it is going to be coming from the steel pipe and from the concrete inside. In many other cases, like in the past, we used to have this uh, uh, steel column, like the structure steel section, and then we encased it in concrete. That was very famous in the past. The same old construction, like in the 40s, 30s, 50s, and early 60s, you used to have this cross section or this type of columns in construction. Because this concrete here, it provides fire proofing. It protects here the column itself, the steel column, because you know steel is going to be very sensitive to any fire right next to it. Well, it loses lots of the strength of it, right? So, in a case like this, in the sort of putting fireproof in the past, because fireproof was not really common in the past, you didn't know about it, it was very expensive. So, it's much cheaper if you just encase the column. This is the reason. So, now we need to understand where the strength comes from. Now, I'm talking about axle forces, like just axle capacity. I'm not getting used to the amount capacity of it. Just for the axle force. In the past, you guys have taken the mechanical materials, a very common problem. And then they give you here a column. And they say that this column is made of two materials. And they say, well, I'm going to have a plate here and axle force. Then they give you here one circle and another circle. They say this can be made out of steel and this can be made out of brass or aluminum or whatever, right? Two separate materials. And I say, let's figure out how much force each one of these two materials is going to take. You guys remember anything like this? It was kind of classic. This is kind of classic mechanical materials problem. And then they say, displacement that's going to happen to both of these two materials is going to be the same. When you put compression, you're going to see here the same displacement. Say, if displacement is the same, let's here distribute the force on the aluminum and on the steel. It's going to be paced on the amount of stress that each one of them is going to be taking. So actually, distribution is going to be based on E for the steel versus E of the aluminum. There's a common problem like this. This provided that both of them is going to be seeing the same strain, the same compression in the column itself. So I said, fine. How about in here? In here, I'm going to say the strength of the column is going to be coming from two items. One of them is going to be the concrete strength, and the other one is going to be the steel strength, which is steel the reinforcer box. So this is going to be a little bit different from this model. This model is to figure out distribution of force between the two materials. But in here, we're talking about the ultimate. What does it mean by ultimate in this case? We're going to be talking about the failure point. What's going to happen to the failure point? So when you load this column, the steel is going to give you a certain resistance. And also the concrete is going to give you another resistance, right? So you're going to have the concrete component and the steel component. If you remember, if I may take you back here for a second, you're going to say when it comes to shear fence, we say PVM equals PVC plus VBS. That is about the shear, correct? We say that this part here for the concrete 
this here for this thing. Very similar to what we have done here, we're gonna do something very similar to it here. So now XL force, I'm gonna call it TPM. It's gonna be axial force capacity of the common strengths. We're gonna have part of it's gonna be the concrete plus the steel component. We don't call it P sub C and P sub S. We don't really do this, but this gave you the concept that we're gonna be doing. You have the concrete component and the steel component. I have here some example of five columns. And you see the amount of tiles? You have lots of tiles. You have too many reboxes. It's not just gonna be four reboxes, right? In the building column. And here's a spider column, and you just gonna be for bridges, or maybe in many cases you do it in park constructions. Let's see what happens. What is the big difference or main difference between Spiral columns on five columns. We're looking here for this relationship. On the x-axis, I'm gonna put the amount of strain that happens in the column under axial loads, and on the y-axis, I'm gonna put here the load, axial force itself. You start with the axial force, and then you look at the strain, and then you have this relationship. You have this elastic response at the beginning. At a certain point, the column is gonna start to yield, right? It's gonna start to yield. Five columns, it's going to stay a little bit with you. Why? Because what's going to happen? You know the pie closure, you're going to have the pie hooks. It's going to start to open up a little bit. The axial compression wants to strain laterally. It's going to open the pies a little bit. In the spider columns, it's just one piece, right? So you're not going to really be able to open it unless you just snap it. So the pie itself is going to be continuous. It's going to be working fine with you, and this is the reason that the spiral column is gonna show lots of strains and the column is not failed yet. So the column is gonna survive here with you, gonna have higher axial strength, just because the spiral here is not opening up. So actually, the confined concrete properties, so what do I mean by confined concrete properties? Now, this concrete, when you put the tires or the spiral around it, you're enhancing the properties. You're changing the stress-strain relationship for you. The code had recognized this issue. So the code knows that this is gonna happen. So because the spiral here is not opening up, similar to what the pie is gonna experience, this is the reason that the code here is gonna give you another value for the spiral column P factor. Say, if you have your circular section, then you have the spiral, or maybe a rectangular section with a spiral reinforcement, the P factor is going to be 0.05 if the strain is going to be, the tensile strain is going to be lower than 0 0.002. You're going to say, well, in my case, I'm working here with only axial loaded member. There is no moment yet on the column. You remember I said that gravity columns is going to be supporting mainly axial load and maybe a little bit of a moment. So if I have only axial load, would you have any tensile strain? <coughs> you say no. It's going to be totally exposed to compression force. So when you have only compression force, I'm not expecting any distance strains. So I know for sure that my P factor is going to be 0.05 for the spiral and 0.65 for the rectangular section. So now this is given. I don't really need to go back to this chart and try to find out these values, right? Because I know that this chart here, it is built so that when you have axial compression in the rectangular section, it's going to be 0.65, five column for round, or maybe rectangular section spiral is going to be 0 0.05. So I don't really need to use this chart. Now I know I can just try a couple of values here. With but there is no strain calculations when it comes to this type of columns. Okay. Do we have an equation for type columns? Yes, say yeah. It is a very simple equation. It says here for type columns. Here's the axial compression strength, which is PPM. This is the one that I have right here. And as you see here, it says concrete strength plus steel strength. Great. Let me look here at the equation. The equation says here PPM, and this says maximum. I'm not sure why it says maximum, but it means the capacity, okay? The capacity of this column is equal to 0.8. This is not the P factor. 
just a factory. You remember like the 0.85 prime C? It's gonna be one of these factors. At one point, we figure out why they put here 0.8. Find three factor, which is 0.65. Five columns can be constant, 0.65. I don't really need to go back to the chart. And then multiply by, and then I see here, 0.85, then prime C is the concrete. And then it says here, AG, which is the cross section area of the concrete column, subtracting the cross section area of the steel, reinforcing box. So I say, okay, this means like the concrete net area. You can say yes. Let's say that you have a column, and then you have lots of rebars on side. So take the concrete area, total concrete area, subtract the reinforcing cross section of the area. Now you have the net concrete area. So okay, it's fine. We didn't do this in the beam design, you remember? We did not subtract the steel cross section area, we just used it as if this for the steel, right? Steel is giving the same as concrete, we just we ignored this. And here's the reason. The amount of the steel vertical steel rebars here is not that small. Yeah good amount of reinforcement that you put on the car. But when it comes to beams, the beams don't have the same reinforcement like what you have in the car. So here, this AST is gonna be kind of sensitive, right, when it comes to this equation. So playing with this value here is gonna be really sensitive to the strength of the car. Now I'm looking at this say it's 0.85 prime C. This is, remind me here with what we used to do in concrete beams. The compression in the concrete beam on the top of it was equal to 0.85 prime C times the width of the beam times the A compression block. So this here looks to me like to be the concrete strength. Correct? Now where is the steel strength? I'm gonna say Fy times A for the steel, the vertical steel cross section area. So if I may take you back here, you're gonna be looking at this column. I'm gonna say here's the area of the concrete, width times length. Right? Of the column. Subtract four cross section area of the reinforcing box. Times 0.85 times A prime C. So someone's gonna say, how about the pipe? Do you need to subtract the pipes? They say no. When you cut a section through this column here, you don't really cut through the pipe. So the only cross sectional areas that you're gonna be deducting in your equation is gonna be the area of the vertical reinforcing box. So let's say here I have four number line, I'm gonna say cross section area. Let's say 12 by 12 and I have four number line. So let me write it here. You can say the column is gonna be 12 by 12 and they have four number line, three bars, vertical three bars. You can say cross section area is gonna be equal to 144 square inches. AST, four square inches, because <coughs> four number nine. <coughs> And then AG minus AST is going to be equal to 140 square inches. It's going to be that simple. So when it comes to ties, we're not going to count them. We don't really look at the ties. Is it okay? Good. We go move forward here to the same equation. Is it okay? So the code, the ACI code says, the amount of steel here, it has a minimum and a maximum. Very similar to what you used to have in beams. In beams, we have minimum, right? Do we have maximum beams? Say, in the past, in the very old codes, we used to have a max, but not anymore. They stopped it. They say, you don't really need to have a maximum, but we're gonna play here with the fee factor. When you put lots of reinforcing, your fee factor is gonna drop down. I said, okay, what's the minimum, what's the maximum in columns? They said the minimum steel, AST, is gonna be 1% of AG. So in our case here, this column, it means 1% meaning what? 1% of this, 1.44 square inches. It's gonna be, this is gonna be your minimum reinforcement that you need to put to the column. Otherwise, don't call it a force concrete column and do not use our equation. This is what they saw say. How about the maximum? Maximum is going to be 8% of this. So take 1.44 times 8 is going to be the maximum reinforcement that you put to the top. Practically, it is really tough to put 8%. It is impossible. 8% is going to be plenty of rebounds. 
The heaviest column that usually you see if you're doing an actual design, maybe 40%. So let's say practically maximum, maybe you put 40%. 5% is giving too much. Because the problem, how would you fit in the rebars inside? How would you put the piles? How would you how do you build it? So it's gonna be now constructability, right? It's gonna be a big thing. So as you see here, the equation for columns when it comes to axial loaded members can be so simple. And as you notice here, that there is no reduction, nothing about the column height. So bottom of the column is not into this picture. We call this gabby for short columns, right? So what does it mean by short columns? Short column means bottom is not an issue. Once the column goes above certain height, there should be a little bit of reduction, or you can account for additional moment on the column, which we're going to learn next time. Any questions? Uh, feel free to type your question. If you need to. You said that we disregard the points where there's the tie and steel. Yeah, which, you don't do that. Which implies that this, like without the ties, is a weaker point because we always have to design to the weakest point on the beam. Okay. How is yeah. without adding steel sure. some stronger compression? Answer your question. This is a section at which I don't have a tie, right, in between, right in the middle. Part. I need to account everything that you see here in this section. So I'm going to have reinforcement bars and concrete. So you can see here is a net of the concrete, and this gave me AST. I'm going to use both of them. I'm going to be taking this AST times FY, this A net times F prime C times 0.25. Okay? Then add them at certain point. Good. How about this section of the column when you have when you cut right up the tie? This is gonna be your question, right? What happened? Why are not deducting this? You say, okay, let me take the areas. The area that's what? This resistive compression. So I'm gonna say I have this four bars, very similar to what I have here. Now when it have when it happens here, when it comes to this tie, actually this tie is supposed to be pressure force. So I just assume it's going to be performing same as concrete. So this is not bad, it's still good. I don't see any problem with this. A little bit more conservative because you're going to say at this section the trend is going to be a little bit higher. But how about in here? It's going to be a little bit lower. Now which section do you think is going to control my design? I'm going to say this section is going to control my design. Here's the column. One section is very strong, a little bit weaker, very strong, a little bit weaker. So take the weaker one, which is this one, and use this strength. All right. So the typical tie arrangement, well, it depends on the column, right? And the column size and number of rebars and this kind of thing. At least when you have a small column, you need to have a bar at each corner of the column. Makes sense. How about when I have your six rebars? You say, well, the largest spacing here, look at this, is going to be less or equal to six inches. Clear spacing between two vertical rebars is going to be six inches. Which means whenever you have a distance here and it's going to be larger than six inches, you need to put a rebar, right? If the distance from here to there is going to be, let's say, 16 inch, what do you need to do? You're going to put two rebar. Unless you put a cross tie like this. You see this cross tie? Once you put it, you can go larger than six inches. Make sense? So this cross tie is gonna be very important because it's gonna keep the column all together. You remember, when you apply compression of the column, it wants to open up laterally. So what's bringing back together is gonna be the tops. And this is what you call here confinement reinforcement. Same thing here. I mean, you can go more than six inches as long as you provide this time. This one here, in this column, you cannot really make this to be larger than six inches. But once you start to put cross ties, it's going to be okay. 
to make it more than six inches as long as you have this height. This is different from the configuration of the rebars. And also, don't forget that also you can bond the rebars. So you can put, let's say, here in one of the columns, and then you can put few rebars like this. You can put up to three rebars in each corner if you want to. Yeah. It might just be the way it's drawn, but that middle column, for example. This one? Yeah. Do they not wrap around the, the tie uh, yeah. on either side? No, they do one hook and one is going to be 90, the other one is going to be 135. They don't really do it like 180 degrees. Let me clarify this. We call this 90 degree hook. This one we put here 180. This one is called here 135. It's going to take a little bit more time. This is going to be very calm. So when you do a cross tie, you do one side, it's going to be 135, the other side is going to be like this. And then you tie it. You're going to have some wire, right? You tie it with the wires, then you force it. And then you put the concrete. And this is perfectly fine. Go to the code, it's going to be okay. This is the reason that when you look here, right, look at this. One side is going to be 180 or 135, the other side is going to be 90. Otherwise, how would you install it? Because the way it works, you're going to have this cross tie, you're going to have it outside, you're going to insert it through this spacing, you insert it this way, hook it around this guy, and then rotate it to close. And then you just tie. If you have the two sides, it's like 135, or the two sides, 180, how would you put it? You need to put it from the beginning. It's going to be impossible to put the cake. It's going to be too long. Look at the spacing here, about four inches. This is very cramped. Just imagine how it puts your fingers and tie the three boards. It's going to be kind of impossible, right? So the spacing here, the tie is spacing. It says S max, and the code gives you your guideline, right? It says you cannot go beyond certain limit. Of course, you'd like to put maybe a tie each eight inches or 10 inches or 12 inches, make your life easier, correct? Because it's gonna be easy that you put your hands, it's gonna be easy when you pour the concrete. But in reality, it's gonna be really tough. So you'd like to add more enforcing as a design, right? The maximum spacing allowed is gonna be based on this for three items, and in California, it's gonna be this for five. So the first one says 48 high bar band. So let's say the pie itself is gonna be number four. How much is 48 in inches? 48. For number four is how much? 48 and the rebar size can be half inch, number four. So the spacing is based on the first condition. 24 inches, exactly, this is correct. So it's gonna be 40 times times, 48 times the bar diameter of the tie. And the tie itself is gonna be number four, half an inch. So it's gonna be 48 times half an inch is gonna be 24 inch, okay? Second check is going to be 16 times the vertical bar diameter. So let's say the vertical bar is number eight, like an inch. So how much is 16 times one inch? is going to be 16 inches. So the first condition here says 24. The second condition says 16. Which now one controls? It's going to be the 24 or the 16? 16. The 16, right? Because you're going to the max. You take the smallest value. The third item here, third check, it says least column dimension. So I'm going to say the column is 12 by 12. So the first condition is 24, and then 16, and then it's going to be 12 inches. Now which one controls? 12 inches. This is good as long as you're not in California. All right? Once you get to California, it says 6 inch max. Your max is 6 inches. You cannot go beyond 6 inches. OK? So the space of the pies in California is giving maximum 6 inches, meaning if I told you that this building is in California, you need to do the first three checks, and then you do the fourth one. You compare it to six inches, and you take the smallest of all. Make sense? So most likely in California, it's going to be six inches. When you open any reinforced concrete book, 
based off the ACI, you're gonna see spacing more than six inches. But it's not gonna work here, careful. Once we start practice here, you open the code, you're gonna see changes to the ACI code. We have a good example. It says, find the maximum design axial of the strength. Well, the word maximum is not clear to me yet, but we figured it out at the moment. For the type column of cross section shown in figure below, 16 by 16. Check the types. Assume a short column. What does it mean by assume short column? It means go ahead and use this equation, right? You can use this equation for short columns. No moment, no additional moment. Use the prime C, the trends of the concrete is going to be 4,000 psi. And if sub y is going to be 6,000 psi for both longitudinal steel and pipes. <coughs> look at the tiles and look at the reinforced concrete. It says 16 by 16 for the column itself. 8 number 9. We really have 8 number 9. We can say, okay, let me look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes, I have 8. And it says here, number three tiles at 16 inch of center for the space. Another thing also the thing. Let me check here the amount of reinforcement. How much reinforcement do I have? It says eight number nine, meaning that AS is going to be equal to eight times one, right? Eight square inches. The cross section of the column itself is going to be 16 by 16. The steer ratio here is going to be 0.03, which means 3%. What is your minimum steer ratio? You guys remember the steer ratio minimum max? What was the minimum? 1% and the max? 8%. So I get 3.1% is good. So for the amount of vertical steer ratio, we are good. You see here the range? It is above 1% and below 8%, so this is good. Now how about the strength? I'd like to figure out the concrete strength. Come on. I'm gonna see here, factor says 0.8, which is not the P factor, it's just the factor of the concrete. Minus 0.65 for the P factors. And then multiply by 0.85, F prime C, now I'm gonna be using here 4K psi. I'm not using here P psi. You see this? Because there's nothing like divided by, there's not like under the screw top. I don't have any of these traits. So I'm okay with this one. And then it says here 256. I'm wondering, what does this 256 come from? What is that? Is this AG? Yeah, like 16 by 16? 16 by 16, is it 256? Yeah, okay, good. All right. Subtracting the cross section area of the steam, which is 8. Yeah, okay, I'm following this. So this gave me the concrete component. This highlight it gives me the concrete component strength. How about for the steel? I'm gonna say for the steel, I'm gonna have here F sub Y, the 60 KSI, multiplied by AST, the eight square inches. So good, I have total of 688 caps as an axis strength of the concrete column. All right. About the ties, you see the ties provided here says number three at sixteen. So okay, number three at sixteen, and the vertical bars is number nine. It says here the spacing for the ties, forty-eight pi bar diameter, and the bar diameter itself is giving number three, which means three eight one inch for the diameter, right? It gives me 18 inch. They say, your maximum spacing is 18 inch. So I said, good, because the one I have in the problem is actually 16 inch. So I'm good. But when you do the second check, it says 16 times longitudinal bar diameter. 16 times, and then you have one and one eighth of an inch. And actually, you just take this diameter from the table for the rebars. It's going to be also 18 inch. This is great. Least column dimension. Well, the column 16 by 16, so I'm good. 
But here's the problem. I have here a big issue with this. Is this in California? It doesn't say. There is no check for California. But if I mention the problem that this is going to be built in California, you have a problem with this column. This column here, you can build any other state, but not in California. You can go 16 inches there, but not in here. And here, your maximum can be six inches. So this six inches doesn't apply to this problem, just because it is not in California. Okay, how about the clear spacing between the rebars? You can say clear spacing, what do you mean? You can say, okay, let me go here. You remember this clear spacing? If you go beyond six inches, you need to put a cross tie. So let me see here the clear spacing. How can you figure out the clear spacing? Let's see it. You have 16 inch, subtract one and a half inch from each side, right? Subtract number three times from each side. Subtract three times the bar diameter, and then you divide this by two because at the end you're going to have two spaces, right? Let's look at this. 16 inch here is a column size. Subtract two times the cover. Subtract two times the pie diameter. Subtract three bars, and then at the end divide by two because you have two spaces. And your dimensions can be 4.4. Less than 6 inches, good. You don't really need the cross tie. If this number here had been, let's say 7 inches, you can say this column is not good. So what's missing? Put the cross tie. Another example. Any questions before I proceed? If, uh... Sorry if you mentioned this already, but if the um, sorry, the dimension of the column would that be the diameter if it was a circular one? Dimension of the column. It's saying that the yeah. for the rules of the spacing of the ties, the the third rule, the least common dimension. So would that least be the common. diameter for a circular? Column? Yeah, diameter for the circle. That's okay. correct. Second problem here, you have the column 24 by 24. Good thing you have cross ties everywhere, right? Good. F prime C, 5,000 feet side. Determine the maximum column axial load capacitance for this column. Based on the code, range for vertical reinforcement ratio. What are you talking about? Range. Meaning, what's the maximum capacity if you use the minimum reinforcement ratio? What's the maximum capacity if you use the maximum reinforcement ratio? So, what's the minimum reinforcement ratio? They don't give me here the column reinforcement. They just say use the minimum code and the maximum code ratios, which means use once 1% 1 and use once 8%. All right, in the hint here it says consider the code minimum and maximum situation. Okay, so how much is the maximum? How much is the minimum? Say so here's a column cross section area is gonna be 576 square inches. Now I have here two cases, right? First case when I use the minimum. How much is the minimum ratio? 1%. How much is 1% to 576? It says here 5.76 square inches. How many rebars would you put in here? Can I put four rebars in 24 inch column? What's the problem? Space is going to be more than, it's going to be big, right? So I need to put one bar in the middle. Said, okay, so this diagram here, it doesn't mean when you use 8%, you're going to be using only eight, three bars, right? You cannot do it this way. But here, at least you need to have eight, three bars in a column like that. How do I know? Because it's a six inch rule. So it's okay. I'm going to be using here eight, number eight. Cross section area is going to be 6.32. So I'm going to say, why don't you use 8 number 7? You say, okay, do you want to use 8 number 7? It's going to be 8 times, and number 7 is going to be 0.6. You're going to end up with 4.8 square inches. It doesn't work. So you need to go at least 8 number 8. 
just to cover the 1%. And you cannot use six reports, right? You cannot use seven reports. You have the square column and symmetrical. It's going to be symmetrical, which means number of bars here needs to be four or eight or maybe 12, but you cannot really go with six reports or seven reports, right? So I'll have to stay with eight reports at least. And again, I cannot go to number seven because if you use here eight number seven, you're going to be getting cross section areas, going to be less than this main of reinforcement to you. Okay, good. So I have here eight number eight with a steel ratio of nearly 1.1. How do I do that? Take the 6.32 divided by cross section area of the column. It's good. All right. How about the strength? This is strength is going to be equal to 0.65. What is the 0.65 again? Is the constant or a factor? P factor. This is going to be your constant 0.8. This is the concrete strength, 0.85 times 5 ksi. And the cross section area, subtracting AST, the 6.32. When I subtract here, I don't subtract 5.76, the 1%. I subtract the actual important part that I have selected. Right? So I'm going to go here with 6.32. Then you add the steer reinforcement. Capacity, right? 65 6.32. And here we go. I have 14, 56 steps. So great. That was simple. Exercise. So I learned here a few tricks. I learned that at least I need day three bars. I learned that at least I need number eight because if I'm going to go here with number seven, I'm going to be going below the minimum. So here I was able to satisfy the minimum reinforcement ratio needed. So great. How about the second case? Let me go here with 8%. This can be very tricky because what three bar size would you provide? You can say, let's go to the largest three bar. I'm going to go here with number eight, and number eight cross section area is going to be 1.56 per inch. It's not written here, but you can see it in the table. AB. 1.56 square inches for number 11. Now, I need a number. This can be even number, right? And don't forget that I'm going to have here four corners. I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight amounts. And they can bundle them. So I need a good number here to be able to divide over eight. So can I go to 26 rebars? Yes, no. Can I go to 24? How do you put 24 rebars? Does it have to be a multiple of eight if you're bundling them? Well, not really, because here you can put three bars, two, 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 and here three, 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 three. But I decide I'm going to be going here with number 11. So let's take here the reinforcement needed, which is the 46 square inches, divided by 1.56. Can you help me with this? Let's take here. What is it? Take the reinforcement needed, 46, divided by 1.56. Okay, I'm gonna have here 29 and half bars. Can you put 29? Can you put 30 bars? Can I go to 30? Three zero? No. no, because it's going to be going above the max. Can I go 29? Sure. Even number, how would you put it in? I need even number, right? So I'm going to say, let me try here 28. All right? So you try 28, you put here 3, 3, and 3, and 3, right? 3, 3, and 3, and 3. How many rebars we have? 9. Then you start to put here 3. 8 by 3. 24 rebars, right? Now we have four more rebars. It's okay, let me put here four, 
4, 4, and 4. And here is going to be 3, 3, 3, and 3. This can make it. Right? It's good. So 28 is good. 29 is not good. So I can live with 28 rewards. So I said, okay, this is going to be my choice. This is going to be 28 rewards. So I'm going to go here. I used here 28 rebars, number 11, total cross section area 43. Now, which number should I use in my analysis? Is going to be the 46 or the 43? 43, because 46 is actually just the limit, but my choice now is going to be 43 square inches, which is about 7.6%. This is good. At least it's going to be lower than the 8%. So, another thing here that we learned that when the code says minimum and maximum, you can't really match it because you need to pick a certain number of rebars. You cannot go eight and have rebars. So in this case, you need to go to only eight rebars, for example, right? So usually the code is gonna be just giving you, is gonna be setting for you the maximum minimum. And you try just to satisfy it. If it says maximum, you cannot go beyond it. If it says minimum, you cannot go below it. But your choice is gonna be in the middle. This is what you need to use in your analysis. And say, okay, let me look here at the equation. 0.65, the fee factor, 0.8, your constant, give me concrete strength, series strength, total of 25, 31. Okay. So, what is the benefit of having these cursines? This can be the big question, right? Why do we have a couple of cases like this? Here is the reason. When you do better design, The architect is going to say, you pick the column size you'd like to put here. Now, you don't want to play with the column size a lot. Maybe in the building, you're going to have three or five column size, different sizes that you're going to be using. You're going to say, okay, I'm going to put here 24 by 24. Now, I'm going to be looking at each column, right? And look at the axial load applied on it, like piece of you. What is piece of you? You call this capacity or demand? Demand. demand. This column 24 by 24, the range for it, it takes from 1400 to 2500 kips capacity. If my demand is getting within these two values, I'm good. I can go with 24 by 24. And let me play with the reinforcement later on. I can do schedule for the reinforcing, or maybe types or marks, right? You can say, this column put here eight rebars, this column put 12, this column put 16, I can play with this. But at least now I have an idea about the range of the capacity I can use this column for. Once I go beyond this limit, you can say, you know what? Forget it, this column is not good anymore. Now I need to change the column size. I'm gonna go maybe 24 by 30 inches, or maybe 24 by by maybe uh, 48 inches or whatever, right? So I can here label the common size. So it's gonna be really important that you know what is the range for X load that allowed X load that you can use in this one. All right, question. We're good? All right, I'm done with today's uh, uh, set of lecture. Let me open here a homework. which is going to be this beam. It's going to be a very good beam for exercise, so that we finish the beam design. And actually, this is going to be for a bridge. <coughs> this is not due on Sunday. It's going to be October 12th, right? Okay. The reinforcement is going to be grade 75. What does it mean by grade 75? Good. Yeah, 75 to the side, very good, right? This is clear. Strength of the concrete is going to be 4,000. Consider the effect of the compression reinforcement. All right. So I have a T-beam that you cannot ignore, and also I have compression reinforcement that you cannot ignore. And this can be a good exercise for a bridge beam. In problem number eight says passive moment. What does it mean by passive moment? Tension where? Top or bottom? How about the second one says negative moment? Tension in? Top. And compression is given to bottom. So when you take this reinforcement here, 
and in conservative compression, if you remember, this is going to be AS prime and it's going to be AS, right? So the first problem is going to hit you when you do AS1 and AS2. You remember AS1 and AS2? Because AS1 is going to be equal to AS minus AS2. But AS is smaller than AS prime. You have more rebars on the top than the bottom. You remember that? No, not really. Let me show what I'm talking about. Remember this equation? We said A2 is going to be equal to A prime. The top. Look here at the top. How many rebars? It says 20. The bottom, 12. Okay? Meaning that AS prime here is going to be 20. Let's say just 20. Okay? And AS1 is going to be equal to 12 minus 20. It's going to be minus 8. Correct? This equation is not good. It doesn't work for this example. You cannot use it for this example. So you need to be careful about this. Okay? So what you need to do is to just to jump to this type of equations. You don't try this at all because you know it doesn't make any sense. There is no negative reinforcement. Reinforcement is a physical value, right? It has to have this positive value, right? It cannot be negative. So playing with this and get frustrated that, that it doesn't make any sense, I mean, don't try it. You need to understand how this is built, these equations. You need just to start here. And once you do here, the compression flange, you need to be careful. It's going to be more than six inches or it's more than six inches. But you have plenty of rebounds. And then it goes here in the steps. Right? You have your six steps for this, six steps for that. This can be fun. Um, if you really like concrete design, you'll enjoy this. You just want to have a course and you need to take it, it's gonna be a different story. But this can be fun for people who really love concrete design. And um, this can be one of the homeworks that I really would like to give you the solution for. So you can have the solution for this after you're done. Other homeworks, I don't give solutions because you have it in the slide sets, but this one you don't. You don't have any problem like this. So it's gonna be kind of a challenge for you guys. Give you a good chance. Don't get frustrated. Try to do your best. And people who's gonna be finishing it and do a good job, of course, they're gonna have a special grade. All right? It's kind of challenging this homework. The X is empty space, right? Yeah, this like hollow section. Okay. Yeah, thank you for asking. I'm gonna say, okay, so what's next? You see, next, we have a project. Did you guys see it already? All right. There's a project layout. You have a building, columns and grid lines. How big is the column size? Is it written here somewhere? 16 by 16, right? The grid is spacing in this direction 26 feet, and here is giving 28 feet. It's giving the grid is spacing, right? Okay, good. So, what is that? If you like here to design a simply supported beam, what equation to use for the moment? You guys remember the moment equation for a simply supported beam? Uh, w squared divided by? 12 or 8. 8. It's simply supported. How about if it's going to be running above more than one support? Like this is going to be one of the slab design problems, right? So here you're going to be taking a foot. And how many spans do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Because you have 10 supports. Same thing here. You have here 1, 2, 3. 3 spans, 4 supports. How do you figure out the moment? 
you need to do structure analysis? You say no. I also give you this. Look at this moment diagram. In this moment diagram, look at the bottom one that I put here some red marks. This is going to be the analysis for continuous beam equal spans and goes from three and more than three spans. So if you have 10 spans, you can use this. If you have three and more, you can use this. Here's the moment diagram. You see the negative moment is how much? W squared divided by 10. It's going to be the negative right above here. It says here 0.1 W squared. And how about here? 0.1 W squared. How about here this positive moment? Because positive moment is going to be the largest in the first span only. It's going to be 0.08 W squared. Okay? How about if I have four spans? What's going to happen? This is going to be my design. It's going to be W squared divided by 10. In the first span and less span is going to be control the possible moment design. How about in the middle? <coughs> if I skip here in the first span, I'm going to be using this W squared times 0.0. So in a slab design, when you have continuous slab, don't do W squared by 8, take the moment from here directly. All right? Is it okay? Good. So let's see next. It says here, Crouch statement. What concrete strength do you want to use? So listen here. You're going to be doing the slab design. Okay, it says here 4,000 PSI. What reinforcing bars? Grade 60. Right? By default, it's going to be grade 60. Okay. Load criteria. I'm going to have dead load. Self weight of the structure member. So the slab, you're going to figure out the slab thickness and then figure out the weight. You have additional dead load of 10 pizza. Now you need to go back, right, to your exercise for the slab design and see how it was designed. Life load. Take 15 pizza for the partition weight, right? 50 piece set for the floor light load. Do you need to reduce it? No, don't reduce it for the slab design. No reduction, okay? Slab design, no reduction. Remember this. Just use the 50 piece set as given. Say, so, okay, so what is the submit name? It says it's going to be due October 17th. All right? And of course, we're going to have time to chat on this. So be sure that when we come here next time, we talk about this. You tell me what you have started, what you have done, you have questions. It says, what I need from you is to do the load criteria for the roof, typical floor, which is the third and second. It's been composed here of three loads. So I want you to do the load criteria. What's the load criteria? Do the weight of the slab. You're gonna say, what thickness should I use for the slab? I'm gonna say, use eight inches. Is it written here? No, but it's gonna be a good assumption to start with. So you'd like your slab thickness to be eight inches. Please take a note of this. Don't come back later on and ask me what's slab thickness. I said use eight inches. Don't try any other thicknesses. So next time I'd like to discuss this with you. I'd like to see what you guys have done about this. You don't want to finish the entire submittal and then end up with completely different numbers, right? So be sure that every one of you guys you ask me. I'm going to be asking you, what did you do about the load criteria? What load have you considered? So by this coming lecture, I want to be sure that you guys are done with the first slide. Just figure out the weight of the slab, total dead load, total life load. And then at the end, I need to be ultimate. So I need this to be complete for the slab design. So the next time when you come here, you're going to be done with this. It's going to be so simple. Because it's going to be a rectangular section, it's going to be for a strip width of one foot, like what we have done in the slab design. All right, any questions before we go?